ولو شئنا and if we wanted لرفعناه surely we would have elevated him we would have raised him who this person بها with it meaning with these very ayat he left the Quran why seeking the dunya he left the Quran seeking worldly benefits seeking the comfort the enjoyment the entertainment of this life that's what he wanted so this is why he had no time for the Quran if you ask yourself the day that you don't recite the Quran at all why didn't I recite why didn't I read I was too busy busy with what checking my phone and going on Facebook and talking to my friends and going out to eat this is what we were busy in this is what we were busy in right it's the dunya because of which we leave the Quran it is the dunya because of which we don't give the rights of the Quran Allah says, if we wanted, we could have raised him through these ayat. Meaning, through this Qur'an, we would have elevated his status. We would have given him much more than other people have. Because what happens is that when a person busies himself with the dhikr of Allah, when his main occupation becomes the dhikr of Allah, Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what he is focused on. I'm not saying, everybody leave your school, leave your job, just worship all day. No. What I mean is that, along with everything you're doing, your main priority in life is to be Allah's servant. Your main priority in life is to be Allah's servant. Then, what will happen is that Allah will fulfill your needs without you even seeking out to fulfill them yourself. Trust me. Trust me. When you give importance to Allah, Allah will give importance to you. And when He will give importance to you, then you will have everything that you need. But what is required from us is that we give importance to Allah. In a hadith Qudsi, we learn that Allah says that, O oh, son of Adam, تفرغ لعبادتي Become free, meaning make time for my worship. And if you do that, then I will fill your heart with contentment and satisfaction. And if you don't, then I will make you busy, busy and dissatisfied. So when a person worships Allah, holds on to the book of Allah, then Allah will raise him with those ayat. Meaning Allah will fulfill his needs. He will cause for him... A good mention, meaning he will give him fame, he will give him everything that that person desires. But it is through those verses. وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا Because the Qur'an, we learn about it, it is ذِكْرُ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ It is a reminder for you and your people, but it is also, ذِكْر has been understood as a source of mention for you, meaning a source of fame for you. Think about it. The Prophet ﷺ, was he not living a very comfortable life before he received prophethood? Hmm? He was married to one of the wealthiest women of Mecca. Right? Trade caravans, such successful business trips, the children, the family, loving wife, he had everything. Everything. And that is the goal of the majority of the people. But when he received the Qur'an, what happened? He had to give up almost everything. Isn't it so? He was praised before. Now he was condemned. He was looked up to. Now he was humiliated. Before, he had the money. He had the family. He had the support. He had the honor, the respect. And now, where was he? In the share of Abi Talib. Boycotted from the entire city. All the people. Nobody spoke with them. Nobody interacted with them. Nobody was allowed to give any food to them. Nobody would even trade with them. Nothing at all. So much so that the people with the Prophet ﷺ, what were they eating? Leaves. Just to stay alive. Khadija ﷺ had died. His children, you know, they had poor health. It is said that Fatima ﷺ, she was very weak in her body. And one of the reasons was that when she was growing up, that is when the Prophet ﷺ faced a lot of persecution. And that had an effect on her physique. It had an effect on her health. He went through all that persecution, all that suffering. Why? Because of Allah's ayat. But then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him such dhikr, 
such praise that there is no person on the earth who is praised like he is. Think about it. Every time we pray, what do we say? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Right? When the adhan is pronounced, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. Correct? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah has told us, if you want Allah to love you, then what should you do? Follow Him. No person is going to Jannah now, unless and until he believes in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why? Allah raised his status. Raised his status. Why? Because of these ayat. But what happens? These ayat, they bring some difficulty in our lives. We have to sacrifice a little bit of our sleep. We have to sacrifice a little bit of our money. We have to sacrifice a little bit of our free time. And at that time it seems very difficult. So there are some people who say, you know what, I've done it. I've studied nine juz, it's okay, it's enough. You know what, I can't deal with this anymore. I have to do something else now. And then what happens? They don't want to undergo that difficulty. They leave it. And when they leave it, then what happens? A person forgets the Qur'an. When he forgets the Qur'an, then shaitan becomes his leader. But when a person says, it's okay, it's difficult, but nothing in life comes easy, except with difficulty. Right? Nothing that is valuable, you can get in life, except with sacrifice. And when you're sacrificing, remind yourself, it'll pay off, it'll pay off, it'll pay off. Yes. When you sacrifice something, for the sake of a purpose, for a goal, that is when you realize how important that goal is to you because you're giving something up for that goal, for that purpose. So it only shows its value. But remember that Allah's promise is true. You know when a person suffers in Allah's way, when he suffers in Allah's way, that Allah has mercy on him, He loves him. You know, we learn in the Qur'an about people who Udu fi sabili, who were hurt in my way. They were hurt. Why? Because they were in my way. If they were at home with their families, they would never be hurt. But because they were in the way of Allah, that is why they suffered. That is why they suffered. In hadith we learn, there are two drops, two drops, which are very, very beloved to Allah. One is a drop of tear. When a person cries, why? Out of the fear of Allah. And the other is a drop of blood that a person sheds in the way of Allah. That a person sheds in the way of Allah. You know like sometimes you're revising your juz. I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but you get a paper cut. Hmm? You get a paper cut and that drop of blood comes out. Don't pity yourself there. Congratulate yourself. Not saying go and hurt yourself. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. But if it happens by accident, if it happens, you know, because at these times we think I'm being too hard with myself. I'm being too hard with myself. But the thing is that this commitment that you've made, it's a very difficult commitment. But why have you made this commitment to study the Book of Allah? There are many ways. I'm not saying this is the only way of studying the Book of Allah. There are many ways, but. Any way that you're adopting to study the book of Allah, remember it's worth every, every, every suffering. It's worth it. Because right now, you're accumulating a treasure for yourself that'll pay off for the rest of your life. It will, if you take this as a treasure. So never regret anything that you suffer in the way of Allah. The book of Allah should be a priority in our lives. Allah says, وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا We would have elevated him with these ayat. وَلَكِنَّهُ But he أَخْلَدَ He clung إِلَى الْأَرْضِ to the earth. He just clung to the earth. He didn't want to let go. أَخْلَدَ إِلَى is from خَالَمْ دَالْ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى is to incline to something with contentment. Yeah, this is what I want. And when I will have it, that is when I'll be happy. So this person, he said, no. I want my family, I want my money, I want my comfort, I want my, you know, fun. I can't let go of that. I cannot give it up. Even if it means I cannot learn the book of Allah. Even if it means I cannot continue with the book of Allah. But this life, the worldly benefits, I'm not giving them up. وَلَكِنَّهُ 
أخلد إلى الأرض واتبع هواه and he followed his desire let me think about it if we don't come one day to a class I'm not saying that this is exactly what this ayah means this is the interpretation just give me an example so that you can relate it with your life okay that if let's say one day you're like never mind I'm not going to do my lesson I'm not going to go to class I'll skip it then what are you doing at home Can I ask you, if one day you don't show up, what are you doing at home? Will you be honest? Okay. The weekends that we're off, we don't have class. Then what are we doing at home? Hmm? Sleeping. Wow. Many people are sleeping. Others are out eating with their friends, families. They're out for a brunch or something. Right? Others are out, go watch a movie. Mall. Of course, how could we forget that? Mall. Weekend morning is the mall time. Right? All of these are what? Desires. Fulfillment of desires is natural. Obviously, it will happen. But within a limit, it is good. If a person is sleeping beyond eight hours, beyond nine hours, okay, even for some people, they need that sleep. If you're sleeping ten hours, eleven hours, that is following the desire. Right? So remember that what keeps us away from the Qur'an is desires. Desires. So you have to fight them. You have to control them. You have to resist that urge. Because either it is two hours of extra sleep and a headache when you get up, or it is some verses of the Book of Allah that will elevate your status in this dunya and akhirah. So choose wisely. So what does Allah say? That وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ He followed his desire. فَمَثَلُهُ So his example. Allah gives an example for this person. Is كَمَثَلْ Like example, الْكَلْب Of the dog. The person who has the book and then he leaves it. Shaitan becomes his friend leading him astray. And this person is clinging on to his worldly enjoyment, fulfilling his desires His example is like that of a dog. Why a dog? Why not some other creature? Why a dog? Because a dog, what does it symbolize? Greed. Right? Because if you think about it, a dog is always, you know, searching for something. If you think about it, ears alert, the dogs are always looking here, there, constantly searching. You know, sometimes when you see dogs, reflect on their nature, the how they are. Always searching for something, for more, for more. Like even though the belly is full, but still the dog will want more. Many times, in fact, dogs will even eat their own vomit. They will eat their own poop. They will. I just googled it today to make sure that it was actually true because I've heard of this a lot. And in fact, many people, so many forums online that said, why does my dog eat his own poop? Or why does he eat his own vomit? What does it show? Greed, greed, greed. Can never have enough of it. وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ So what happens is that he just wants the dunya, dunya, dunya. He watches one movie, not satisfied. Another movie, not satisfied. Another movie, not satisfied. And this is what happens when we start fulfilling our desires. We can never be satisfied. You eat at one restaurant and you're like, let me eat another as well. I have to try this one. I have to try that one. I have to try that one. Mom, we never ate there. Mom, it's been so long we went and ate there. Let's order from here. That's the main focus? That's the main purpose of existence? I need to buy this. I need to buy that. I need to make more money so that I can buy this. And the worst is the example of the television. That when you start watching that television, you can never have enough of it. Has it ever happened? That you're watching and you don't feel like turning it off? So even if you have to go cook or clean or read or something, you're watching. Aisha? One of the Jumu'ah khutbah, Khatib was mentioning that a nurse who stayed with the, in palliative care with like 10-12 patients for four weeks. And she was mentioning in the end, because she noted every time, that most of the patients, they had one regret, everyone. And the regret was that they worked too hard for this dunya. And they can see that dunya finishing in front of their eyes. So... You know, that's the regret everyone had, that they work too hard for this dunya. And I think that's what everyone does. Yes. And we work too hard in fulfilling our desires. وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ So Allah says, فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ His example is like that of a dog. 
in tahmil if you attack alayhi on him tahmil alayhi if you attack him meaning the dog from hamal hamim lam if you attack the dog then what will it do yalhath it will stick its tongue out yalhath is from lam ha sa lahath is basically the heavy breathing the panting of the dog you know when the tongue is also sticking out and if you think about it a dog is always doing that why The scientific explanation behind that is that they say to let out the body heat, right? Because they don't sweat. But if you think about it, what does it show? That the tongue is always sticking out. If a human being sticks their tongue out, what does that show? First of all, extreme disrespect to the other, right? And what does it show? The tongue, what does that signify? With the tongue, what do we do? We taste and we speak, right? So, إِن تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثْ أَوْ تَتْرُكْهُ يَلْهَثْ Or if you leave him, still the dog will be sticking its tongue out. Meaning constantly the dog has his tongue out. Likewise, the person who starts fulfilling his desire, he's never satisfied. Never satisfied with no matter how much he eats and what he eats and different cuisines he tries and different foods he eats and he's never satisfied. There's no contentment in this person's life. ذلك, that is مثل, example of who? القوم الذين, the people who كذبوا بآياتنا, denied our verses. فقصص القصص, Allah says فقصص, so relate القصص, the stories, why? لعلهم يتفكرون, so that they reflect. Tell the people about this example, so that they reflect and take heed. So we need to reflect on this too. That a dog, tongue out, drooling, greedy, dissatisfied, constantly desiring more, and no matter what you say, it doesn't change. So likewise, this person, no matter what advice is given to them, they don't listen then. Because sometimes it happens that there is a person who is practicing the deen and all of a sudden you see that they're different, they're changed. And then you advise them, no difference. You talk to them, no difference. They don't change. Whether you attack them or you leave them, you advise them or you ignore them, they don't change. Why? Because they're only concerned about fulfilling their desires. Sa'a mathala. Evil is the example of who? Al-qawm, the people. Al-ladina kathabu bi-ayatina. Those who deny our verses. Wa-anfusahum. And themselves. Kanu yazlimun. They used to do zulm. This is an evil example of people who leave Allah's verses and do zulm on themselves. Because in reality, the one who abandons the ayat of Allah, what is he doing? Doing zulm on the Qur'an? Okay, in a way, he's not giving the right to the Qur'an. But the greater zulm is on who? Himself. Why? Because he, he is harming himself. He is allowing himself to go astray. He is allowing himself to disobey Allah. He is allowing himself to go to hellfire, basically. And fusahum kanu yazlimun. They do zulm upon themselves. You know, one of the scholars, he said, that it does not befit a person who has something of knowledge, meaning who knows even a little bit, that he wastes himself. It does not befit a person whom Allah has given even a little bit of knowledge that he wastes himself. How does a person waste himself after knowledge? Not acting upon it. Going against what he's learning. Not benefiting from that. Because he's wasting himself. Because if he implemented that knowledge, if he acted on it, what would his darajah be? Really high. What would his rank be? Really high. In the sight of Allah and in the sight of people. And likewise, How does a person waste himself? By leaving that knowledge. By abandoning it. By not learning more. Because if he learned more, imagine what high degrees he could achieve. But when he doesn't learn more, he just stops right there, then what happens? He begins to forget, forget, forget. And he begins to leave, leave, leave. And eventually he's left with nothing. So he has wasted himself. Evil is the example of those who deny Allah's ayat and they do zulm. On themselves. So basically, what is the lesson in this for us, in these ayat? Allah's book is a treasure. Allah's book is a protection. Allah's book is a means of remaining firm on Surat al-Mustaqeem. So don't leave it. Previously, the Bani Israel were mentioned, right? Their scholars, their judges, what would they do? Leave the book, change it. Why? To seek worldly benefits. 
So don't leave this book just to make the dunya. Because this dunya will end. And so will your life end. These pleasures will come to an end. But what will remain? وَالْبَاقِيَاتِ الصَّالِحَاتِ مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ Whoever Allah guides, فَهُوَ So He is المُهْتَدِي The rightly guided. Who is the rightly guided person? The person whom Allah guides. And remember, hidayah is of two kinds, right? Ilm and amal. Irshad and tawfiq. Irshad, Allah has given to everyone. Allah has taught people everything that they need to know in the Qur'an. But tawfiq is given to who? The ability to act on that knowledge, to benefit from that knowledge is given to who? Those who want that guidance. Those who want to become better. Those who want to remain firm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided different means of obtaining guidance. So the person who will adopt those means, who will desire to be guided, then Allah will give him tawfiq. مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِي وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ And whoever Allah sends astray, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Then those are losers. The one who Allah sends astray, meaning he allows to go astray. Why? The person doesn't want to be guided. He doesn't want to adopt any of the means to be guided. Then what will happen? Such a person is a loser. What is the greatest means that Allah has provided to us by which we can obtain guidance, by which we can remain guided? What is it? The greatest means by which we can obtain guidance? The Qur'an. So the person who will hold on to the Qur'an, Allah will guide him. And the person who will leave it, then he is a loser. Whose fault is it? It's his own fault. وَلَقَدْ And certainly, the رَأْنَا We have produced... From ذَالْ رَا Hamza, the رَأَ To create, to produce. It's the same root as for the word ذُرِّيَّة. So we have produced لِجَهَنَّمَ for hellfire كَثِيرًا many مِنَ الْجِنْ From the jinn وَالْإِنْسِ And the ins, human beings. Many from the humans and jinn have been created for what? For hellfire. What does it mean? That many from the men and jinn will end up in hellfire. Many, majority, will end up in the fire of hell. Notice the word li jahannam. Lam is of different kinds. One is for the purpose of ta'leel, to show the reason behind something. And another lam is of aqiba, to show the consequence. Over here, lam is of aqiba, that the consequence of many men and jinn will be what? Hellfire. Where will they end up? In hellfire. Why? Because Allah gives guidance, but what is the attitude of majority of the people? We don't want it. We don't want it. This is too difficult. I can't do this. Allah says, Lahum for them are Qulubun hearts. These people have hearts, Lord of Qalb. But with these hearts, La Yafkahuna Biha. They do not understand with them. Meaning they don't use their heart. Walahum and for them are Ayun eyes, plural of Ain. They have eyes to see with. But with these eyes, لا يبصرون بها They don't see with them. وَلَهُمْ And for them are آذَانٌ Ears, plural of udun, لا يسمعون بها They don't listen with them. Doesn't mean that they have been created as such, that they are blind and they are deaf and they don't understand anything. No. This is not what the ayah is talking about. People who don't have the ability to hear or see. Not the physical ability. What is being mentioned here is the intangible ability. Which is that when a person uses his heart, his mind, his intellect, he uses it to understand the truth, to accept the truth. We will use our minds to understand complicated formulas. But when it comes to understanding the ayat of Allah, the laws that Allah has given, the words of the Arabic language, the words of the Qur'an, whether it is grammar or what do we say? I can't do it, can't do it. Try at least. Try. Because the people who don't even try to understand the truth with the hearts that Allah has given them, what happens? Eventually their hearts lose the ability to understand. The eyes and the ears, what are they? Windows to the heart. Because you see, you hear. And what you see and hear goes where? Into the heart. Meaning then you use your mind, you understand, you interpret what you've heard, what you've seen, you benefit from it. But if a person doesn't use his eyes to see the truth, doesn't use his ears to listen to the truth, 
then eventually a time will come that his heart won't work, his eyes won't work, his ears won't work. Just like any part of your body, if you don't use it, then what will happen? If you don't use it, let's say your hands, if you don't use them, then your arms won't be strong enough. Correct? If a person, their knees are getting weaker and weaker, and they stop walking altogether, then walking will become even more difficult for them. Correct? Like, I know of a person who has a broken shoulder. Okay? I mean, basically the muscle is broken. And there is no treatment for that. I mean, what can you do? And they've been told to keep using their arm as much as possible. Remain active. Because as long as you remain active, your body will work. And once you lie down, then you're stuck to the bed. Then you won't be able to move around. So, the same way, our eyes ears, hearts, if we don't use them to understand the truth, then what will happen eventually? What does Allah say? خَطَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُرُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةً And such people who end up in hellfire, Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ ذُوسْ كَالْأَنْعَامِ Like the grazing livestock. These people are living on the earth like animals live on the earth. Why? Why does Allah compare them to animals? Because the animals, what's their main focus? Eat, sleep, reproduce. Human beings who don't have faith in Allah, who don't live for a greater purpose, who don't live in submission to Allah, the book of Allah is missing from their lives, then they are living the exact same way. It's just in a more high-tech way. Right? That get an education so that you can make money. Why? So that you can eat, you can have a family. And then you die. How is it different from a cow? How is it different from a goat? How? It's no different. You're just enjoying more, you have more pleasures compared to the animals, but essentially, they're the same lives. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَّلْ Rather, they are astray, more astray than grazing livestock. Why? Because a grazing livestock, for example, a cow, it'll at least respond to the shepherd. Right? Even though it doesn't understand the sound, but it knows that when the shepherd will make the sound, it means I have to go back. Correct? These animals, at least they have this much sense. Or they will eat what is good for them. If you offer a cow meat, would it ever eat it? No. And if you offer it grass, it'll eat it. But the people... Who don't use their faculties that Allah has given them, from whose lives the Qur'an is missing, then what happens? They are worse than these animals. Why? Because they don't respond to their shepherd. They don't respond to their guardian, their protector. They don't respond to anyone who's telling them, do this because it's good for you. Don't do this because it harms you. They don't respond. They just go on fulfilling their desires. And when they're offered something, they don't care whether it's halal, haram, it's something they like, they'll eat it. They'll take it. They'll enjoy it. Why? Because it's fulfilling their desires. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ humul الْغَافِلُونَ Those are the heedless. They're living their lives in a heedless way, as if they are asleep. So what do we learn in this ayah? That we better use our hearts, our eyes, our ears in search of the truth, in understanding the truth, in internalizing the truth, in benefiting from the guidance that Allah has given. وَلِلَّهِ And for Allah, الْأَسْمَى The names, الْحُسْنَى The most excellent, the best. Why is it that people don't worship Allah? Why is it that they choose to fulfill their desires over worshiping Allah? Why is it that they're negligent towards the book of Allah. Because they don't know Allah. They don't know Allah. If they knew Allah, then what would they do? They would give importance to His words. If they knew Allah, they would live in service to Him. If they knew Allah, they would not disobey Him. So Allah tells us that Allah has the most excellent, the Beautiful names. Al-Husna is the feminine of the word Ahsan. What does Ahsan mean? Most beautiful. So excellent, perfect. All of Allah's names are descriptive names that reflect attributes of perfection. 
perfection. And this is why Allah says, He has the husna names, most excellent names. So if we want to worship Allah, what is necessary? That we learn about Allah. We know who He is. This is why in the Quran, so many times Allah tells us, "Wa'lamu an Allah, wa'lamu an Allah." Know that Allah is such and such, meaning He has this attribute. "Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illahu." Know that there is no god worthy of worship but Him, because the first step is to learn. And once a person learns about Allah through His names and attributes, then what's the natural consequence? "Fadruhu biha." So call upon him by those names. Meaning, then a person will be able to worship Allah. Then he'll be able to dedicate his life to Allah alone. فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا So call upon Allah by those names. What does it mean by this? Call upon Allah by those names. That literally when you're making dua, call upon Allah by using his names. So if you want forgiveness, don't just say, Oh Allah, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Say, Ya Ghaffar. Ya Ghaffar, the one who forgives again and again. Please forgive me. If you are going through some difficulty, you want things to be fixed for you, everything is a mess, then say, Ya Jabbar. Because Jabbar, Jabr also means to fix things, to put them right. You know when you feel that everything's a mess, my house is a mess, my relationships are a mess, my work is a mess, my personal self-development is a mess, everything's a mess. Call upon who? Al-Jabbar. Use the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call upon Him. And secondly, فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Worship Allah through those names, meaning every name of Allah teaches us something about Allah. Doesn't it? Because it's a descriptive name. So, see what the name teaches you, and then do what you are required to do. So for example, when Allah is at-tawwab, what does it mean? That He accepts repentance. So what does this teach us? What kind of ibadah should we do? What kind of ibadah? Of tawbah. Right? Of tawbah. So, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَرُوا And leave. الَّذِينَ Those people who يُلْحِدُونَ They practice deviation. فِي أَسْمَائِهِ In His names. Leave the people who deviate concerning his names. Sayyujuzawna. Soon they'll be recompensed. Ma kanu ya'maloon. That which they used to do. Yulhiduna is from ilhad. Lam hadal. Lahad. Do you know what lahad is? What is lahad? Grave. What kind of grave is it? L-shaped grave. And this is what is recommended in our religion. That when a person is buried, and what should be done? Not just that a hole is dug and the person is put there and the mud is poured on top of him. No. That dig and then go sideways. Alright? And then sideways, that is the lahad. And in the lahad, place the body. Once you've placed the body, then close that hole. Okay, where the body is. With, you know, mud or whatever, uh, planks of wood and any natural material that will decompose, that will become earth. And then the hole, fill it up with mud. This is the proper way of burying the dead. Okay? So, ilhad is to go sideways. Like you're going, digging down and then you go sideways. So, leave the people who deviate concerning his names. What is deviation in the names of Allah? There are different forms of ilhad in Allah's names. Ibn Qayyim has mentioned several ways. Of them is to deny the names of Allah. To deny some of his names, or all of his names. Like for example, Allah is As-Samir. And the person says, no way, I don't believe that. It's not possible. It's not possible that Allah hears every sound. How is it possible? There's so many sounds, so many people talking, so many voices. How can Allah hear all the time? So they say, no. As-Samir doesn't mean he hears. It's just metaphorical, but it's not, uh, you know, how you interpret it. This is what? This is deviating in the names of Allah. Likewise, distorting their meanings. Distorting the meanings of Allah's names. Or claiming that they have no meaning. Because there are people who do this with the names of Allah. Who say that, yeah, Allah has all these names, but they don't mean anything. They're just names. 
they don't mean anything. Like for example, they say about the name Allah even, that it means nothing. But that's not appropriate. When Allah has said that His names are Husna, what does Husna mean? Beautiful, perfect. All of His names reflect attributes of perfection. How can something be perfect if it's meaningless? Na'udhu Billah. Likewise, to consider them as human attributes. That Allah hears the way we hear. That na'udhu Billah, we have an ear. And Allah also has it. No, we don't say such things. Remember, when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah, we affirm everything as Allah and His Messenger have told us about Allah's names and attributes. If Allah says He has a hand, then yes, we affirm that. Alright? We affirm that. We believe in that. And part of this belief is also that we negate everything that Allah has negated. We negate everything that Allah has negated about His attributes. That for example, in the Qur'an we learn that Allah does not do injustice with anybody. So nowhere at all can we say that Allah is unjust to this person. Nowhere, never. We negate dhulm from Allah. Alright? Likewise, Allah says that He is one. He has no partner, no child, nothing like Him. So we also say that. Okay? Then part of this belief is also that we don't add anything, don't make up anything, don't invent anything. We stop exactly where we don't have any evidence for. So any name, attribute, if there is evidence for it from the Qur'an and Sunnah, we believe in that, we affirm that. And beyond that, we don't go into any detail. Why? Because there's no benefit. There's no way you can find out about it. So for example, we learn about Allah's two hands. Correct? And if a person says, yeah, two hands, they are like this, and he starts describing them, their size, their appearance, that would be what? Ilhad. Alright? So we have to be very careful. Likewise, Ilhad in Allah's names is to derive names for Allah that are not befitting His Majesty. That do not befit His Majesty. They are not His names. Like for example, one of the common lists of Allah's names that we find, in that is the name Adar. That is not Allah's name. Adar is not the name of Allah. Because what does Adar mean? The one who harms. Allah does not call Himself Adar. He says that Dur is from Him. But He doesn't say that He is Adar. The Prophet ﷺ never said that Allah is Adar. So if they never said it, we are no ones to say it. We don't say that either. Likewise, of Ilhad is to give human attributes in explanation to His names. So for example, Allah is Ashafi. And a person starts to say, Allah is the best doctor. No. You don't say that. You don't say that. You only describe Allah with the words that He has described Himself with. That the Messenger wasallam has described Him with. Likewise, we learn that Allah is Nurus samawati wal ard We don't say that Allah is white. No. You don't say that because there are people who say that God is white. No. You don't say that. What proof do you have? There's no evidence behind that. Likewise, distorting the names of Allah. So for instance, the mushrikeen of Makkah, what did they do? Allah's name, Al-Aziz, they changed it to Uzza. They named an idol with the name Uzza. Allah's name, Al-Mannan, they changed it to Manat and gave that name to an idol. Allah's name, Allah, they feminized it. They called an idol, Allat. So this is all ilhad in the names of Allah. And this is a very serious matter. What does Allah say? Leave such people. Wadaru, Leave them. Stay away from them. And remember, they'll be punished for what they do. So when it comes to, the main lesson that we learn here, is that when it comes to the names, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember, don't open your mouth unless you have knowledge about that name, about that attribute. If you have that knowledge, then go ahead. If you don't have that knowledge about that particular name, attribute, then remain silent. Don't talk about it. Don't say it. Because it could be Ilhad. And his most beautiful names, call upon them. What's the benefit of calling upon Allah's names? Hmm? They're more likely to be answered because you are inviting Allah's special mercy. Right? You're praising Allah. And also remember, one of the greatest advantages is that the 
hum, the sadness of your heart, you know, the depression in your life, the anxiety, the trouble that you're facing in your heart, it goes away. Gives you peace. Gives you contentment. Because you're calling upon the one who is perfect in every way. And if he answers your prayers, then you'll have no trouble. The Prophet ﷺ said that if a person has hum or hazan, meaning grief, anxiety, then he should say, Allahumma inni abduk, ibnu amatik, nasliyati biyadik, madin fiya hukmuk, adilun fiya qabauk, as'aluka bi kullismin huwalak, with every name that you have, I call upon you. Sammayta bihi nafsak, that you have given to yourself, aw anzaltahu fi kitabik, or you've revealed in your book, aw allamtahu ahadam min khalqik, or you have taught any of your creation, aw istathartha bihi fi ilm al ghaybi indak, or you've kept its knowledge with yourself, an taj'al al Quran al azima rabi'a qalbi. That you make the Quran the spring of my heart, one nur al-sadri, and the light of my chest, wa jalla huzni, and you make it a source of removing my huzn, my grief, wa dhahabaham me, and taking away my anxieties. When a person says that, then his huzn, his hum will go away, because he's calling upon Allah with his names. How many names does Allah have? In Hadith, we learned that He has ninety-nine names, but remember, they're not limited to ninety-nine. There are many more than that, as in this. Dua we learn. Okay? So, in hadith we learn, مَنْ أَحْصَاهَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever enumerates the names, he will enter Jannah. What does it mean by enumerating the names? Knowing them, learning them, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those names. So, one of the things that we can start doing is read the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly so that you know them. Because if you don't know them, how will you call upon Allah with those names? Recitation. ولو شئنا